I have trouble recalling my first memory of poverty. But my first and most vivid memory of hunger was in India. What I saw was far more than a group of skinny street children, or even a lack of food for that matter. It was deeply psychological. When I was 14, I learned that hunger was not the lack of food. And instead, hunger was the lack of faith that the next meal would come. Hopelessness in their eyes. I had countless nightmares about those eyes. We live in an age of space flight, and yet one of the most basic human services is not available to a vast number of global citizens. How is this possible? When my team and I looked into the agricultural industry, the fundamental problem seemed to be stemming from the industry's over-reliance on land and logistics. So my team wanted to create a solution that could produce commercial-scale quantities of food as close as possible to the source of consumption on the smallest possible footprint. Or to put it simply, completely rethink the way in which we produce food today. How on earth are we going to accomplish this? Well, what about shipping containers, we thought. I mean, they're standardized, they're mobile, modular, scalable, stackable, and if you look around, they're abundant. We wondered if we retrofitted a shipping container with an efficient food production system, maybe we could help to alleviate some of the most pressing challenges of the industry. Now, my path to agricultural technology was an unconventional one, to say the least. I studied political science and economics at UCLA, but I chose a career in investment banking and IT. In fact, the great team that I work with every single day come from just as diverse and just as unconventional of a background. But because of the non-technical nature of the team, we had to study a lot. And because China was not at the epicenter of the innovation, we naturally had to look abroad. So we did. We learned about fertilizer use efficiency from the Netherlands, land and labor efficiency from Japan, water efficiency from Israel, lighting technology from Korea, and of course, just like any resourceful startup, we looked onto the internet for great ideas, for moral support, and the occasional funny cat and dog videos. But of all of the academic or even the commercial operations that we looked into, no single piece of insight was more profound or unforgettable for me personally than the one that I received through a short conversation with an individual from the World Food Program. On the topic of pest control in remote villages in East Africa, I learned that the villagers were using candles to protect and save their harvest. I was told that the villagers would light a candle and place it into a sealed storage facility with their pest-infested crops. The lit candle would quickly burn out all of the oxygen in the storage facility, and within minutes, the pests would suffocate and die. This is true innovation. So with a head full of knowledge and a heart full of confidence, our optimistic and naive team set out to first hand-build and then professionally manufacture our shipping container farm. The problems that we faced early on were seemingly unending. We battled through freezing temperatures, power outages, broken pipelines, labor management challenges, procurement issues, I mean everything. And even after we completed construction of our prototype and commenced our growing operations, the problems only seemed to compound. We had many, many crop failures stemming from pest infestations, nutrient imbalances, and poor operational management. And then things took a turn for the worst. Someone very close to our team was diagnosed with late-stage cancer. In the shock and disbelief, our team frantically searched within our container for a solution to help alleviate some of the pain associated with the disease and the side effects associated with the treatment. And it was during this time that we stumbled upon superfoods like wheatgrass and kale 
both of which we grow in our container today. Sadly, we were unable to get a single vegetable to him before he passed. However, it was in this tragedy that we came to a realization and a focus. We realized that our technology had value, but it was not in what we originally thought to mass produce the calories that could feed the world. Instead, it was to mass produce the nutrients that could extend and improve quality of life. And that was part of the inspiration behind the name of our products, Eden, like the garden, but spelled E-D-N, which stands for Everyday Nutrition. From that moment forward, we were going to apply our technology and our efforts to addressing nutritional security and safety over hunger, at least for the moment. So where are we now? Peter Thiel wrote in his book, Zero to One, that he'd like to ask an interview question to a lot of his potential hires. What do you believe in that most people disagree with you on? Our team's answer to this question would be most people believe that commercial scale agriculture is big scale, big land. But we believe that commercial scale agriculture is actually small scale, no land. Let me explain. This is what our container looks like today. We've installed a vertical racking system with recirculating hydroponic channels. We use the best in high efficiency LED lighting and paired it with one of the most robust insulation and airflow systems. We even developed our own monitoring and automation system as well as a task management app, all of this in-house. We poured every little bit of farming, manufacturing, and management knowledge into our technology and the resource use efficiencies have been incredible. Our container farm currently uses 100 times less land and 20 times less water and fertilizer compared to traditional soil-based agriculture. The system requires minimal labor, no heavy machinery, and I guess best of all, requires no pesticides. Just to put our water use efficiency into perspective, the amount of water that the average person uses during their shower each night is the equivalent to what we use in our container every single day to water 3,000 plants. Now, these resource efficiencies are incredibly exciting for us because it allows us to significantly expand the possibilities for agriculture in three key areas. First, how it can be done. Second, where it can be done. Third, and maybe most importantly, who it can be done by. Launching a new farming operation typically requires careful land selection, soil remediation, and heavy machinery purchases, all of which are time-consuming and expensive. Even after all the initial prep work is done, and done well, the operational success can still be derailed by adverse weather conditions. Another concern is the long-term human health hazard, as well as the environmental degradation from the prolonged and heavy use of fertilizer and pesticide use. When it comes to chemical inputs, less is always better. Our operational system, this turnkey production system, can actually be deployed in almost any region that has a simple power and water connection. Not only did we break the bond between agriculture and geography, climate, and logistics, but we also produced a system that produces very little, virtually none, of the negative impacts to people and the planet that is typically associated with agriculture. These efficiencies really allow us to become creative with where we can start doing farming. Our container farm is currently located on an elevated platform on a parking lot less than eight kilometers from the city center of Beijing in one of the most densely populated districts in all of China. This commercial system is capable of producing up to 50 kilograms of leafy greens every single week on a mere 30 square meter footprint. It is the dead of winter in Beijing outside. But inside of our container, it's always the summer of Italy. We want to take this one step further 
by taking the growing system out of the container and putting it directly into the high traffic indoor urban landscape and enable hyper local food production by integrating the technology directly into the communities for which it will be producing food for we will be able to create the safest but also the most transparent food and we don't want to stop in the urban landscapes what about bringing the technology to the arid deserts of the middle east a location that has been previously considered either inhospitable unfeasible or uneconomical for food production our technology can actually thrive in this location partly because of the water use efficiencies but also because of the climate control capabilities and i guess one of the most exciting opportunities for us would be to optimize this technology so that we can use it for natural and man-made disaster relief and hopefully in the not so distant future for food production on the moon and mars by bringing the farm into the city and by pairing it with an intelligent operational management app we want to make farming as easy and as ubiquitous as driving a car we hope that our technology will inspire the next generation of urban white collar farmers by showing them how beautiful and simple and rewarding the profession can be fundamentally changing people's perceptions about agriculture will be one of the key drivers to actually improving our current food system in fact changing people's perceptions will have a far bigger impact on revolutionizing agriculture than any one single technological innovation and already the ties are changing indoor hydroponically grown food is already making it onto our restaurant menus and our shelves gone are the days when people blindly associate flavor and quality and safety with a romantic view of a farmer working under the sun and tilling the soil here are the days when people begin to associate agriculture with cutting edge technology and a respectable career in the city as our team fine tunes our technology every single day we get a little bit closer to enabling anyone anywhere to produce the safest healthiest freshest and hopefully soon the most sustainable food our team is committed to developing products that would make food safety, nutritional security, and distribution inequality a thing of the past. And we are excited to start making a bigger impact in the agricultural industry today here on earth and tomorrow out in space. Thank you.